I want to welcome you guys to the Winner's Legion. I've been thinking about it for a long time and I need to get everybody together that have the same mindset, that has the same goals, aspirations, the focus they want to do things bigger in life. Not talking about it, doing it. Actual action. And for now, we're gonna we're gonna start with that. A legion of winners, people that want to become something incredible and they're willing to put in the work. Hit the like button, subscribe. Today we're gonna to talk about risk. Risk is greatly overlooked when you are thinking about becoming something more than yourself. Essentially, somebody, something. Believing in what you do is paramount, of course, but you're gonna to have to take a massive amount of risk. And when I say risk, I'm not just talking professionally, it's also gonna be personally as well. Because if you can't take risk, you sure as hell cannot move up in life. And when I say risk, I'm talking about a bunch of stuff. For example, when at my lowest point, in terms of my career as a trainer, I took a big risk and I left the company with a steady job, with a steady paycheck, steady income. Don't worry, I don't have bitch tits. That's that thing is just underneath and pulling me up, but you know. I used to have bitch tits. It was pretty bad. But now I actually got muscles here. Anyway, so when I was at my job, I had a steady job, steady paycheck, and it was pretty it was pretty cush. I could have stayed there, I was a manager, making pretty good money, and I was moving up at the company, but I was fucking miserable. I couldn't stand it. I had to deal with politics. I had to deal with a-holes. The company structure had changed. Everybody was just, it was a free-for-all and it sucked. And I didn't like it at all. And I had to take a big risk. It was the worst part of the economy in 2008. That was brutal. I don't know if it's worse now, but I'd say 2008, 2009, pretty risky time to quit your job. And I said, you know what? I'm better than this. I'm gonna take a risk. And I quit and I had a plan and found a better job, better company. And I started working for them, much better treatment, even better pay, even at a very precarious time. A lot of people said I was crazy. You're gonna leave your job, it's uncertain. But without that risk, I wouldn't be here where I am today, enjoying myself on this beautiful 4th of July while my employees work. Obviously I work for them, but they work for me and we do it all together. <clears throat> so risk, what are you willing to risk? What are you willing to put on the chopping block to get to where you wanna be? Everybody wants a piece of the pie. They all wanna win. They all wanna become great, but what are you willing to risk today? Are you willing to risk your life? Are you willing to risk your well-being? Are you willing to risk all your worldly possessions? What are you willing to risk and put on the chopping block? What are you willing to risk? I always pose these open-ended questions because I want you guys to know that they are open-ended. They're rhetorical. They're also actionable, but they are rhetorical. What are you guys willing to risk in order to become great? Some of the things I'm willing to risk for this company is to live out of a freaking van. That's right. And I mentioned this yesterday, but I really am willing to risk it. Willing to risk not having a home because <clears throat> that's how much I want to succeed. I'm willing to risk not having any future. That's a risk in itself, putting everything on the line. 
And yes, you could lose it all, there's no doubt about it, but the fear of losing and the fear of failure is going to trump all of that, especially when you don't have a safety net. And most people have a safety net. Most everybody has something to fall back on, right? They have maybe some sort of inheritance or they've got something, you know, some money stashed away and all this. But the less you have to fall back on, the more likely you are to succeed, right? Because then you've got nothing, no safety net. It makes a huge amount of difference in the way you do things. <clears throat> you live a lot leaner when you know that you can lose it all. Man, I'm flimming today. What's up with that? You're much more accountable when you have nothing to lose. Um, because you're willing to go those extra miles. I mean, the argument could be made that you're more accountable when you have everything to lose. But when you got nothing else to lose, you, when you have nothing else to lose, it's more, you're living more uh, raw. Now, don't get me wrong, having a fallback plan is great. Having skills, investing in yourself is the first investment you should make. What I mean by investing in yourself is skills, education, that actually does something. I'm not talking about education in poetry, literature, stuff that's not going to make you any money. Waste of time. If you're not going to school for STEM, you're pretty much wasting your time because almost everything else could be learned on the job. Even business. A lot of that stuff can be learned without an education. Especially trades. Trades are extremely hot. If you've got a trade skill, man, you got a hell of a lot of leverage. Because things always need to be fixed. Things always need to be repaired. Things Having a trade is, is very lucrative. And many people may look down on tradespeople, but trades are where it's at. And having those types of skills, because there's always gonna be need. There are always gonna be people who have those skills, electrical, plumbing, you know, uh, what's it called, repairs, auto repairs, house repairs, pool repair, those are always going to be in high demand. Some of the skills I have to fall back on, got extensive personal training skills, extensive experience. If I really needed to, I could open back up and start a studio and essentially go to town and grab clients. I know I could do it as a skill and hustle and grind get back to where it used to be. Worst, worst, worst case scenario. So instead of falling back on a safety net, I fall back on a set of skills if need be. That's how it goes. And the risk is really the scariest part for most people. I get it. But you're going to have to put something up. Whenever you go to buy a car, home, whatever, you're going to have to put up some collateral usually. If you don't, the interest rates are very high, right? You either have a trade in as collateral, you need something as collateral to really make yourself work for it. So the risk is your collateral. Putting up that collateral every day and risking something, risking a broken leg, risking. That's how you get ahead in life. Risk is hard. It really is. It's it's really not easy. None of this is easy. We already we've gone over this. Your hardest times are yet to come, especially when you take the risk. It's easy to live a cush life with no worries. But to really get somewhere, yeah, you're gonna have to take some massive risks. You're gonna have to do something different. And it doesn't need to be extremely different, it can just be a little bit different. It could be a little bit different, but it's got to be something. It's got to be something that you're putting something on the line. 
and in return you'll get something later on so when you do risk things up front there is a payoff to be had later on down the line <clears throat> the thing is you're going to have to put in the work so that means getting off your ass and doing something about it so risk is going to be a big 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 part of winning and the more you risk the greater the reward obviously the greater the fall the greater the failure the greater the embarrassment but without risk you won't ever get anywhere and if you already have a family it's harder to take those risks if you're single it would be easier to take those risks there's no doubt most people I come across very risk averse which is normal it's very normal most people aren't willing to live out of their car to make it it's perfectly fine it's not for everybody but for those of you that really want to go you have my support as long as you put in the work I can support you a thousand percent you can make it and you will if you're determined enough so keyword risk risk versus reward the greater the risk the greater the potential reward got to put it all on the line guys example here's another risk I'm taking I'm taking out a business loan on my business to expand production I could cut cost now I could cut development I could cut a bunch of different areas but instead of doing that I'm pumping more money in to get to the finish line to make some money it's a massive risk I think I could cut costs and scrape by and just have you know mediocre business scraping by doing a little here and there it would do okay it wouldn't do bad I'd live comfortably to be honest with you guys if I stop production right now in my company I could live very comfortably for years comfortable which is fine living comfortable is fine nothing wrong with that I would never criticize that especially if you're okay with your lot in the life now if you're not okay with your lot in life and you've got a problem with your where you're at and you're complaining and you're bitching and whining I have no sympathy for you zero because you made it happen you got over this you are the order of your own demise that means you are in control of your present your past and your future and you need to get on it so my risk that I'm taking like I said taking out a business loan risking higher interest rates risking risking a lot we're gonna pop some money into marketing a marketing plan for SEO search engine optimization pay-per-click Google Ads all that stuff without all that yeah, you could scrape by you could scrape by but do I really want to scrape by no I didn't make it this far just to scrape by and if I fail miserably so what I'll tell you guys about it and I'll let you know hey I failed and here's why and here's what I'm gonna do about it but I'm already preparing just in case I'm preparing I'm being prepared and that means cutting my expenses so if I gotta live out of the van so be it why do I care who do I have to impress nobody I've got nice suits I've got nice clothes nice watch I've got all sorts of nice so what what does that actually do I've got nice things so what anybody can buy nice things but not everybody can win guys think about that think about that Punt, push put that into your brain not everybody can win anybody can buy nice stuff but what are you really willing to risk what are you gonna put up as collateral I'm willing to put up my home vehicles even clothes all that stuff so what if I win which I probably will I'll have everything to show for it and that's what it really boils down to when you make anything of yourself nobody and I be nobody understands your grind 
Nobody's gonna understand your grind, grind at all. Nobody's gonna understand what you sacrificed in order to be great. Nobody. They're all gonna say you're lucky. They're all gonna say the same shit. Well, you're lucky. What they're really telling you is, I didn't have the balls to do what you did. Luck is bullshit. Don't you ever listen to people who say you're lucky. Because they don't know jack shit. They don't know anything. People who say you're lucky have no clue how far you've gone. What you've sacrificed in order to be great. They have no clue. That's part of the risk. They don't know what you risked. They don't know that you risked being paralyzed and quadriplegic and all this stuff. They don't know what you risked. It's, in fact, I've got a nice little story for that one for risk. You guys aren't gonna believe this, but I was riding one of my motorcycles years ago. This is a while ago now, geez, please. It's been like almost six years, Jesus. So anyway, I was riding my motorcycle and I thought I was clever and I took off from a stoplight really, really fast and a lady pulled out in front of me, made a U-turn. I said, oh shit. And I saw in slow motion, I was like, this isn't going to be fun. And so what happened, I hit her car and I went over the handlebars and I did a nice little front flip landed on my back and my ass and yeah that that sucked and let me tell you something that was not cool that one hurt and when I got up I knew I was like oh shit I'm in oof this is not good and uh, for the next three weeks I was literally paralyzed the first day couldn't move I couldn't move any part of my body because I knew the uh the, uh, what's it called? What does that happen when you, in, you know, when you get that impact? You, uh, I forgot what it's called. I'll think of it in a little bit. But anyway, when you hit something really, really hard, especially on your spine, you can't move. Your legs don't move. Your arms don't move. Your whole lower body is pretty much paralyzed. Um, and it's not fun. It's very scary. It's terrifying. But luckily, I was wearing all my gear, as always. I always wear full gear. And when I got up, I knew there was going to be a problem, so I had the ambulance come and get me. And that was scary as hell. And that would hurt, I'm not going to lie. But I went through the rehab and I thought to myself, I'm going to get through this. This isn't the worst that I've ever been through. And I did. And I rehabbed and now I can run, I can sprint, I can do everything that I could do. But man, those, those first few days, I remember laying in that bed and I was really not, I was worried. I was worried. I was like, man, I can't move my legs. I can't even feel them. My body just would not, I couldn't pick up my legs. I was crippled. And thankfully I had my brother around and a friend and I told him, look, I'll be fine. I'm going to make it through it. Don't freak out. I'm just going to rehab. Thank God I had all those personal training certifications and I did it. That risk is what I took in order to really, you know, experience life on the motorcycle. And I do take that risk. I still have a motorcycle, but I learned my lesson. I learned to slow the hell down. And that's really what you got to ask yourself every day. What risks do I want to take today to become great? What do I want to do in order to progress and become spectacular, to become special. Your risk is paramount. Without your risk, you will never see reward. You can, you can wish it, you can hope it, you can think it's going to happen one day, magically it's just going to, you know, you're going to, one day it's just going to snap into focus and you're going to get it, but it never will. And the reason being is because your competition is hungrier than you something I haven't talked about much. Now, a lot of people say, oh, yo, you know, your only competition is yourself, which is true. However, everybody else out there is up against you as well. 
think about it. Butterflies everywhere, what the hell? Jesus, they're chasing me. What the hell? Anyway, think about the guy who's hungrier than you, who wants the same exact job, who's willing to eat dirt to make it. You're up against these people. Are you really willing to go up against them? Are you really willing to fight for that job as badly as much as they want it? Are you willing to go up against them? Probably not. Every day I think about the people that have sacrificed in their lives to make it to where they are. And that's, that's what fires me up. I know that there's other people out there that are sleeping one hour at night you know living out of a trash can and but they're they're about to win because they sacrificed more than everybody else i know this instinctively you can call it bully mindset you can call it you can call it uh, elitism whatever you want to call it to rationalize your existence but the more focused you are on success and sacrifice risk you're going to see something special happen in your life i never thought i would get this far guys never I never ever thought I'd be running a company that does revenue like this, that employs people all over the world. I employ people all over the world. It's insane. Yeah, it's insane. I, I never thought I would have this type of leverage. I think I'm going to turn around. I walked all the way to Palos Verdes. It's beautiful out. But I never thought I would make it this far, ever. And it was mainly because I just never got the encouragement, you know? I never had the, um, I don't know, the, the personal, the personal backing of my family. They just never, they were never into, they weren't that positive when it came down to uh, becoming successful and they never, they didn't know how to do it themselves anyway, right? Most of them had no understanding of, of success and sacrifice and all those you know, other, other buzzwords I've been using. So just keep that in mind that no matter what you have, if you have zero support right now, if you have nobody on your side, I'm on your side. I may be a stranger to you, but I am with anybody that is willing to do the work, willing to make the sacrifice, and willing to fight for everything they've got. Because those types of people are incredible. I've met them all over the world. China, Mexico, Hong Kong, Macau, Europe. I've met people all around the world that had that fire. And they didn't make any excuses for their situation. And like I said, if I failed miserably, I'll fail spectacularly. Let's just put it that way. If I fail spectacularly, you guys will know about it because I'm not going to be embarrassed about it. There's no embarrassment in doing, not trying, not trying, doing, action, following all the way through. Fail spectacularly. Fail with a purpose. In fact, I'm a big failure. I've failed at so many things, and yet I've won at many things. I failed riding that motorcycle. I totaled that cycle. Whew. It looked like an accordion after I, oh my God. When I saw that thing, I was like, Jesus, how did I survive? <laughs> oh, but it was my dumbass fault. It was 100% my fault, 150%. I learned a valuable lesson that day. And that's my point, guys. There's nothing that you guys can't overcome. If my crippled polio ass, you know, feeble, feeble walking around crippled legs can overcome that you guys can overcome anything and of course my situation isn't the worst I've heard of way worse situations I'll never forget I trained this one guy and he was a paraplegic with multiple you know he had scars he'd been in a bad car accident uh, you know he hit his head and all this you know he was in uh, he was in serious pain, you know, and I'll never forget every day I trained that guy, he had the most positive attitude and I'm not even making this up. He couldn't move his legs. 
that guy was determined to move his freaking legs. He just wouldn't, he just, there's something about that guy. He would not give up. It was insane. His, every day we would just attempt to move his toes. He'd been a quadriplegic for years. No, 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 paraplegic. I, sorry, just legs, just legs. And I'm like, this guy, this guy is determined. He's determined to move his freaking legs. And each day that we trained, he would figure out, I don't know how he did it. He said it, it would be an involuntary muscle spasm here, but he would just, I don't know. And ever since that day, I was like, man, this guy, he'd been in like a horrible car accident, but he just, he just, he wouldn't give up. His determination. My eyes just popped out of my head when we got his legs moving. I never knew what happened to that guy, mainly because his insurance ran out, he moved, but really, really cool guy. And, man, that just, I couldn't, I couldn't believe that somebody who just, it was like, he just, he would just, he just would not, he just wouldn't quit. He just wouldn't quit. No matter what. He said, I don't care what the doctor said. Doctors don't know shit. I said, fair enough. And every day we got that little, those big toe, well, his left foot, big toe to wiggle a little bit. And then his legs would shake. He'd figure, I don't know how he did it, but man, I got to find that guy. That was a long time ago. Oh my God. I was like 14 years ago. Holy sh... 13 years. 13. Yeah, like 13 years ago. Holy cow. But my point being, you're going to meet people like that in your lifetime who are incredible and some are just going to stay there. And I met another one. He was a big, the biggest guy I ever trained. Really overweight. 480 pounds. I mean, just a mess mentally. But he didn't give up. And now he's down to under 200. He's looking good. And we just built this friendship over the years. I still talk to him to this day. And at first he wasn't determined, but he had the fire in him and somehow he found it. Some, somehow he just, he just said, I'm going to do this. There was no amount of training that I could do to make him amazing, but he just, I don't know. It was crazy. He went through the mental journey and turned it around. It's, it's just incredible guys. These people risk throughout their lives and achieve spectacular results. And that's what I want from you guys. That's what I want for you guys. And to be perfectly honest, <laughs> I was gonna start this channel way back in December of last year. And I didn't do it because out of fear and my own personal doubt as to, you know, am I gonna get people to watch? People gonna watch me or people gonna even, who, who gives a shit? I was like, no, I've got a message. I've got a message and it's not a typical message. It's not the common message. It's not going to be fluffed up. I'm not going to, look, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything with you guys. I'm just not going to do it. I refuse. I, I just, I can't. I've always been a direct person. I hate indirectness. It bothers me. It's just so annoying. It's like, you know, you've always got something to hide, these people. I've got nothing to hide. So what? I get embarrassed. So what? I get laughed at for fucking up. So the fuck what? So what? You cook, you shame, you you know, you use all these pejoratives and you say, hey, you're this, you're that, you're that. So the fuck what? And now what? Well, you're an elitist. So now what? You're a sexist. You're this, you're that. I've heard every, come on, you've all been insulted. But guess what? It doesn't do shit. It's not going to change the way I see the world because I've got more experience than most of you anyway. You get what I mean? So maybe you need to get off your ass and take some risk. Maybe you need to knuckle the fuck up. Maybe you guys need a little ass kick, kicking. Not kissing, kicking. I almost said ass kissing. Because a lot of you guys do want your ass kissed. You want to feel good 24 hours a day. That's not life. Nobody feels good 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 
Now, you can the majority of the time, but guess what? Most people don't. Most people have ups and downs, right? And that's probably, that's probably why most of you guys are depressed. Because you're constantly seeking happiness. I don't seek happiness. Why the fuck are you out there seeking happiness anyway? Happiness is a feeling. Feelings change every day. You're going to have good days and bad days. That's what you guys need to adjust to. Get out of your feelings and get into the facts. The facts are, you. if you're watching me right now, you're not where you want to be. Those, that's a fact. Or if you are where you want to be, you're on the way to something better. Because you wouldn't be watching me if you didn't. You're curious. I don't have a huge following, but I don't give a shit. I'm still going to make these videos, and I'm going to put it out there for the people that need it. I don't care about reaching millions of people. I care about reaching the people that need this stuff, that need a good kick in the ass, that need a reality check. Because we all need a reality check periodically. We all need a reality check period, pre, excuse me, periodically. I had a lot of caffeine today. We all need that reality check. If we don't get it, we go off and we start doing stupid ass shit. We all need a massive reality check. Because reality is sublime. You could live in fantasy all day and you could stay watching TV, but when you wake up from that nap, watching TV, where are you now? You're screwed. You got nothing. You look around your life and you got nothing. Then you got to go back into fantasy to just get through the pain of your loss, right? To be honest, that's, that, that, was, that was easily a good 10 years of my life. Depression, fighting depression, staying in fantasy, watching eight hours of television a day, playing video games. Yeah, that was me. Getting fat and no muscle, no shoulders, nothing. Just a big old son of a bitch. I'll never forget, I would get two pizzas every night with, with a two liter of Coke and a calzone. And I would, man, that was just dark. That was, that was too much. And I just burned through all that food. And sometimes I'd even get wings. It's easily six, 7,000 calories without even breaking a sweat. I'll never forget when I graduated from two medium sized pizzas cause I'd get four different toppings. And then I'd go up to, you know, the larges. And I was really, really, I was just depressed and content and letting life just pass me by every day. And I saw other people just pass me by and I just let them do it. Every day, guys. Every day people would pass me by. They would graduate from, from school and you know, they'd get a good job or whatever and I would just, just be complacent and depressed and uh, you know, things will turn around someday. It was like I was in a fog, a fog of depression. And it was painful and it, it wasn't cool. It wasn't fun. I'd say that was the lowest point of my life. And I had to really give myself a reality check. And when I gave myself a reality check, man, that sucked. I was very, very, very low. But I had to figure a way out. I had to figure it out. Because if I didn't, I would have been, I don't know where I'd be today. Probably still be at that miserable ass dead-end job listening to my boss hound me about stupid shit and he was more miserable than me that's the scary part you know it was like it was just it was just such a pathetic existence let's just put it that way yeah it was just it was just pathetic and I didn't risk anything at that time I'll never forget and god that was depressing it's just so low, right? Always fighting with people and always having conflicts without re any real resolutions. And I didn't have a life. I didn't have anything going on, nothing. Everything was just sadness. <laughs> it was so bad. Holy cow, that was a long time ago. 
But ever since then, I said, I'm not, I, I just, I can't do this. I can't be in mediocrity. I can't be on, and I was surrounded by losers. That was a massive risk that I took was getting rid of all my loser friends. Man, I had some loser friends. I had some guys that were just wanton destruction. They were just this ball of destruction. They always found ways to excuse their bad behavior. They always had excuses. They always, they just, just, just failures. They always had something, some excuse, some reason why they weren't where they wanted to be in life, you know? And they, they just, they never became anything. And I know it's, it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy to do this, but you're going to have to drop those people. You got to drop them and they're going to give you, they're going to, they're going to make you feel guilty. They're going to guilt you. How could you do this? How could you leave us? Oh, you think you're better than us? Especially the guys. The guys get pissed. Oh, you think you're better than me? Well, fuck you. You know, they get, they get mad. But the sooner you leave them, the sooner your life improves. I'm glad I left a lot of good negative friends at the time. Good people, negative as fuck. Horrible attitudes. Horrible. Leeches. Hanger-ons. Just succubuses. Succubi. Sucking my energy out every day. Giving me headaches. Just miserable losers. Failing at life. Always sad about something. Always upset. And never accountable. Never. It was never their fault. Hell no. Oh, it was, it was my, you know, my mom died, so now I can't do anything. Or, you know, I have no family, therefore I can't do anything. I didn't grow up with money, so I can't do anything. Always some excuse. Always. Able-bodied people, by the way. Young guys, able-bodied, and they weren't stupid. They were just, they were just depressed, losers. And that's who I hung up with, so that's who I became. Your friends are you. Your friends are you. The people you hang around with are you. That's who you become. If you have a bunch of winners around you, you will become a winner. If you have a bunch of losers from the ghetto around you, you will become ghetto. That's life. Whether or not you choose to believe it or not, that's part of life. Think about it. If you're winning in life, you're going to hang with winners. You're going to have people who sacrifice. You're going to have people who are dedicated. If you are a failure at everything, a loser, you're going to definitely hang with those types of people. You're going to attract them. Big time. Big time. Your headspace is everything. If you 100% believe you're going to win and you put in the work, you're going to attract people that are like that. More butterflies. Yeah. Big ass butterflies. So, with that being said, who do you have around you? What are you willing to risk? Who's in your life right now? Do you have a bunch of winners in your life or do you have a bunch of losers? Do you have a bunch of negative people who are going to second guess you every second of the day? Or do you have people that lift you up and take care of you? What do you have in your life? Who do you have in your life? Do you have people that make you happy? Do you have people that lie to you? You know if they're lying to you or not. Come on, be honest with yourself. You know if they're lying to you or not. Are your friends gonna tell you the truth when you need it? Or are they going to give you a bunch of bullshit? Are they gonna coat the truth? Are they gonna sugarcoat everything? You gotta be honest with yourself. How many of you are honest with yourselves? Are they honest with their, themselves, your friends? Do they make your lives chaotic? If your friends are making your lives chaotic, you got a problem. If your friends are happy, if they're jovial, if they have good intentions, they're gonna make your life incredible. I think you guys have to ask yourselves a lot of hard questions. 
I think you guys need to get the hard answers. Because the sooner you get to reality, the sooner you can make change. Change is everything. Change is constant. Change is, is daily. Change, progression, uh, progressing into life. Without that, you can't become anything. So, you gotta make, you gotta actually put pen to paper. Action. Yeah, so I got rid of all my friends. And thank God I left that stupid ass job because my boss pissed me off. That little fucking midget. God damn it. He sucked me into the quicksand many, many times. And he just loved it. He, he got a kick out of it. He got a kick out of seeing me miserable just like him. I'll never forget that. And when I finally left that knucklehead in that company, I was free. I was free as a freaking bird, man. I was free as a freaking bird. I had everything I needed. And left, uh, I left everything. I left all the, the nonsense, all the drama, all the inner fighting. I'll never forget that stupid ass company. That was a, that was just, that was just a pathetic mess. <laughs> it was just silly. And I, I can't believe I stood it. I think I stayed there for like two years because I wanted to move up to the company. And then when I realized that I had to deal with a bunch of a-holes and no matter how hard it worked, it was never good enough, I left. Because people don't leave companies, they leave management. You get what I mean? They don't leave companies, they leave management. Nice. People playing games today, having fun. Fourth of July, you know, people are gonna hang out, they're gonna have fun, play games. See, that's awesome. They're playing uh what's that game called? Cornhole. So anyway, left that company, went to a new company, much, much better treatment, much better people. But even then I wasn't content. I couldn't work for anybody anymore. I couldn't listen to a fucking boss who knew less than me telling me what the fuck to do. A knucklehead who had no ambition and had mainly just got there by obviously desire. I'm not going to knock that, but they didn't necessarily have the brains that I did. And I said, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm going to go off on my own. I'm going to start my own company. And I went off as an independent contractor. And I worked at this little guy's studio and he paid me a percentage and that was fine. And I was still wasn't content. I said, no, I don't want anybody overseeing anything that I'm doing. I'm going to go off and do this myself and take on the expense. And that was a ballsy move because it's, it's a 24-7 deal. There is no downtime. There's no, I'm going to think about it and, you know, take a day off and all this. When you're in business, you're in business. So I thought about it, but... I realized that's really what I wanted to do and I was right because now I have complete control over my own destiny most people can't say can't say that they they have any of that they don't have that their life is in somebody else's hands and I just refuse to live my life like that so got rid of the losers got rid of Got rid of the loser friends, got rid of the loser boss, got rid of all the people that would tell me no. And I started to expand upon that. I started to get people in my life that understood what it took to become great, to become entrepreneurs, and I'm still adding people to my life that do that. It's a, it's a constant journey, and I'm gonna get more people in my life like that people like you guys who really really want to win badly people that want to fight people that want to make something of themselves and achieve and win and that's another reason why I do these videos these vlogs outside because I'm a guy of action always have been always will be it's hard for me to sit at a desk and do these videos now they're much more thought out you know when you're sitting at a desk or you're standing and all this 
which is fine, but I like these action montages where I can get out here and do this stuff. And by the way, I don't just walk. I run, I bike, swim, kickbox, all of it. So it's not just walking around. Elliptical, you name it. So the bottom line is this. Whether you're at the top, whether you're at the bottom, whether you're in the middle, if you've got the desire, if you've got that risk factor involved, if you're willing to risk, you're gonna go off and you're gonna see great things start to happen. You're gonna start achieving things you never thought possible. Obviously your desire has to be high, but if you've got it, you're gonna go get it and you're gonna do massive, massive things. And it's a pivotal moment. You're gonna to have to really ask yourself how badly you really want it. You're gonna to have to ask yourself every day how badly you really want it. And you're either gonna execute on it or you're not gonna execute on it. You're gonna take that risk or you're not, right? There is no in between, there is no try. I'll try it today. No, you're all in or you're not all in. And if that scares you, don't go all in. And if it does scare you and you wanna overcome that fear, then go all in but you're not gonna be able to try. Can't try to have a kid. Once you have that kid, there is no trying. You got it, you did it. You've had it. You either do or you don't. So eliminate try from your vocabulary. You add do or do not into your vocabulary. I'm all about a law of attraction. Look, I get it. There is definitely law of attraction. However, that is coupled with the fact that if you're attracting negativity, you're definitely a negative person. There's no doubt. And law of attraction is not gonna manifest anything. You cannot manifest success. You either do it or you don't do it. And there's no substitute for the hard work, zero. There is zero substitute for hard work. You can't work smarter, but as far as putting in the reps goes, you got to put in the reps. You're going to have to put forth some effort. You're going to have to put forth some sacrifice. And if you don't, then you get what you deserve. You get what you earned. Not deserved, earned. My bad. My mistake. You definitely got what you earned. If you don't get anything, that means you earned nothing. That means you did nothing. And you're gonna say, well, what if? What if this and what if that? Well, I already know that you're in a loser mentality if you say, what if? I know that you're not willing to really get it. Well, not everybody could do that. Yeah, I know that. I know that not everybody is and the vast majority of people will not. That's fine. I'm talking to the people who wanna go get it. I'm talking to the people that wanna win. Is that you? Is that you? Are you putting in the work every day? Are you success? Uh, are you sacrificing? Are you risking? Or are you just bitching and complaining? Seriously, are you bitching and complaining, or are you going out there and getting what you want? You don't see me bitching and complaining. I'm here. I'm winning. I'm I'm sacrificing every day. Are you guys doing it? Seriously, let me know in the comment section. Are you guys sacrificing? Are you guys getting what you want? Or are you complaining? Or are you making excuses? What do you really want to do? Do you want to keep whining and keep complaining? and keep trying to debunk my theories, or are you gonna go out there and you're gonna do something about it? The questions aren't gonna change. They're not changing anytime soon. So you either unsubscribe and don't watch and make some excuses as to why you didn't do what you really wanted to do. Tough love, oh, you know, it's too intense and all this, or just be, just be honest with yourself. I didn't have the balls to do it. I don't have the guts. Stop rationalizing. Losers love to rationalize. Well, this is why. 
yeah, I already know you're going to rationalize. I already know you're going to rationalize your bad decisions. I get it. I used to do the exact same thing. I'm not saying I'm better than you, but I am better than you because I'm winning. Seriously. Think about it. There are better people in life. There are people that are better in life. Everybody's equal. No. There are better people. There are generals. There are lieutenants. There are captains. And then there are privates. The general is worth more. Period. I don't care what you say. Some people are worth more. Did you have to accept that? Or you cannot. You can stay in denial and delusion. Not accept anything that I'm saying. That's fine. But for the people that do, they know that they've got to put in the work. This isn't for everybody. This is for a small percentage of people that want to go up. And the rest of the people are going to find their rationale as to why this won't work for them. They're going to rationalize that this is just too much. This is too mean. And it doesn't work. And what if I fail? And all the what ifs. I know, I already know what you're going to say. And you could do that, or you could not, and you can actually get off your ass and do something. So we'll see. We will see. We'll see what you get out of these videos. You get out of these long winded, <laughs> these long winded success videos. Let's see what you guys got. Let's see if you guys are willing to put in the work. Let's see if you guys are willing to risk it all or a little bit. Maybe you're willing to risk a little bit because you want to see a little bit of return to see if it'll work. That's fine. I support that decision. What do I have to lose? I, have, I don't have a dog in this fight. Let's see if you guys can put your money where your mouth is. Let me know. Let me know in the comments section. Let me know what you guys, guys risked and what you what you see as a possible, uh, excuse me, possible potential reward. And then we'll go there and see what you got. Because like I said from the beginning, I'm not stopping till I get where I want. So we're going to see if you guys could do the same. Until next time, I'm watching you.